in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Thank you, Jesus. 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 Now lift your voice and sing hallelujah to the Almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah 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 Thy will be done. Thy will be. That's how his kingdom comes. When his will is being done. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Thy will be One more time, thy will be done in our lives, oh God. Thy will be done. 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 Bible says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say the Lord, thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a hope and an expected end. Lord, our hearts are open tonight. This is not an ordinary service. This is one of, it's not one of those services. We submit to your word and we ask that it will challenge and change us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Good evening again. Please hug one another. Greet one another before you sit. Hallelujah. It's good to be back home. We apologize. We're just returning from a trip. We thank God for what he's doing. Amazing. Um, we just came back from Adamawa State. It's a lovely place hallelujah brothers if god is taking you that direction we come with a prophetic word it's a safe zone <laughs> hallelujah god has been faithful oh brothers and sisters how many of us can testify god has been faithful you know sometimes we take for granted the things that he does in our midst his faithfulness sometimes we take for granted the breath the life the energy the grace and um, I think that it is important that every once in a while we just take out that time to thank him 
I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I have learned and I have mastered the art of thanksgiving. My entire life revolves around thanksgiving. Never will I utter a word against his faithfulness. That we are alive. While we were coming, I think I was just talking to one of my people and there was a ghastly motor accident that just happened probably minutes and seconds. And I know that car some assaulted most likely killed everybody there. Praise the Lord. And um, sometimes we take for granted that we are alive and healthy. But I have learned to give him praise. My soul will always praise him for his faithfulness. Every time I come in for koinonia once, I just step down from the car and I look at God's people, hungry and ready to receive. My heart is gladdened, but I still give him thanks. Because it's not as easy as this for everyone. Hallelujah. That's why I raised that song, You Are Good and Your Mercy and Yours Forever. It is very important. This probably is already a prophetic word for someone. Never ask God for anything when you have not given him thanks for what he has given you before. You must have that attitude of gratitude. Gratitude is the secret for more. Anything you don't thank God for, you will never see more of it in your life. Anointing, influence, power, revelation, grace, whatever it is. Hallelujah. Learn to give God thanks. Thanksgiving has to do with nothing uh, around your circumstance. Many of us say, I want to make sure that things are happening. My no, 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 no. The Bible says in everything, give thanks. Praise the Lord. Listen, you cheat, you cheat Satan in a remarkable way when your heart is stayed on Thanksgiving. Are we together now? There are people who didn't get admission, probably. I'm sure, I've gotten only God knows how many text messages. There are people who trusting God for jobs, marriages, other people celebrating testimonies of what God has done. As far as Thanksgiving is concerned, it makes no difference. You must cultivate the culture and the attitude of Thanksgiving. And you will see God move beyond your prayer point. You will see God move beyond your prayer request. Brothers and sisters, and he will do things in your life that will surprise you. This is the God that I serve. This is the God that I know. When you thank him for his finger, we say, you will see his hand. And when you thank him for his hand, he will reveal his entire self. Hallelujah. Can we take out one minute to thank God? Is that too much? Lift your voice in one minute. Just count your blessings. Don't complain. Don't say, God, if you only give me a better job. All those things are, are deceptions from the pit of hell to rob you and cheat you. The Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. I was talking to a lady who has been on admission in the hospital for the past, I think, two and a half years. And all you will hear from that lady's mouth is melody. She's not thinking of marriage. She had a very good job before she became sick. A terminal disease, leukemia. It's almost a death sentence. Yet this lady is always praising the Lord. And there are people who are complaining about job, complaining about husband, complaining about no money, storming the gate of heaven with a lot of noise that reveal immaturity. Lift your voice and say, I am grateful. I can never repay you, but from my heart, I like to say that I thank you. I will never repay you, but from my heart, I'm saying, Lord, that I thank you. Thank him for everything he has done. Lord, for your faithfulness. There are many things you are yet to do, but I thank you for the ones that I have seen. I'm alive. You spoke to me that you will keep me throughout this year. And I thank you. I've not spent money on drugs. Thank you because the desires of my enemies have not come upon me. Lift your voice and thank him. The psalmist said, if the Lord had not been on our side, now may Israel say, 
have you forgotten that he alone is a shield for you the bible calls him your glory and the lifter up of your head please thank him this is not our teaching tonight but i feel that i need to keep putting in us that attitude of thanksgiving lord jesus we thank you go ahead and thank you for your family members for faithfulness a gentleman has been sending text messages to my phone i think for the past three days his eyes are going blind completely blind from glaucoma another family is trusting the lord for over 2.5 million to to fly their father to india for a surgery that will destroy him listen don't take for granted what god is doing you are complaining but it's because your mouth can talk you are grumbling only because your legs can walk forget about all that you think god has not done and tell him thank you thank you you're complaining of admission but it's because you can read and write lord jesus we are deeply grateful deeply grateful deeply deeply grateful we acknowledge you you are faithful thank god for koinonia thank god for what he's doing lord we thank you amazing things by the spirit you need to only travel out of this region to see what the teachings are doing in the lives of people we give you thanks we are not ungrateful people we choose to see what you are doing it's a choice we choose to see what you are doing and we thank you hallelujah praise the lord cultivate this attitude and you will cheat satan you will cheat impatience you will cheat failure once once you come to a point where you are a great person the devil cannot do anything with you again because you thank him Job said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. The Bible says it is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. To sing his praise in the morning. Hallelujah. We live in a very ungrateful generation. Very ungrateful. We always want more. Lord, you've given me five children. How about adding two more? Lord, my salary is 300,000. Can't you make it 500,000? Right? Lord, you delivered me from accident, but when will another car come? Very ungrateful. There's this lust for more. But those who reign in life are those who can say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Learn this. And this is a key that will open you up to unprecedented realms. Things you never prayed for will follow you like a charm because you are grateful. Hallelujah. Pay attention to what I'll be teaching tonight because I believe the Lord will bless us very, um, very powerfully. The teachings that come here attempt to challenge our mindsets and build us. In recent time, I've been studying, um, I have studied this, but I've been paying detailed attention to the exact spiritual requirements that make a man usable you notice that the teachings that have come in the last maybe three or four weeks have been centered around preparing us to be able to host the glory of god this is the pursuit of people people wonder why certain people are mightily favored right certain ministries are used by god and i have been editing my philosophies and my understanding about why god will seem to deposit heavy dimensions of his glory and his anointing and i have been amazed at the things that i've been discovering when you get the teaching the man god uses there i teach on a factor that i've learned i used to think the secret of spiritual power is just bible studies and prayer and fasting and while that is important in recent time as i have grown and as i have come into deeper intimacy with the holy spirit i found one factor that overrides them all i told you motif right 
let me do a quick recap on, on it and then we'll build up from there that the number one reason why many people do a lot of spiritual activities please pay attention this has nothing to do with ministry the number one reason why people keep doing a lot of spiritual things with little result is that fundamentally our motives are corrupted our motives are wrong many men of god want power because they want to prove to people that they are not failures i've told you it's not enough reason for god to give you the anointing again let me use an illustration that i gave an example remember um what's her name anna and penina right the bible tells us that penina had children and anna was barren anna kept praying and praying because she was trying to stop the mockery of penina and god said it's not enough reason for me to give you a child until she changed her motive and her motive became to return that son back as a prophet unto god she prayed just once and a baby came your motive overrides your fasting please hear me your motive overrides night vigil your motive overrides moving from prayer house to prayer house your motive overrides sowing a seed you can tap into anything you want to tap into god will scan your motive until he finds himself there otherwise you will never taste of his glory how many preachers want fame how many preachers want power they, they just want a situation where they are considered to be a success as good as that is it's not enough reason for you to host the glory of god so our motives hallelujah there are so many ladies who want to get married to prove to people that um i am not like the rest you'll never get a husband that way you can choose one for yourself but not the one god will give there are many people who want to do a lot of things people labor to try to buy a car you ask them why they say somebody dead me and i did betting with the person you will never buy that car believe me except not god's way you are ready to frustrate yourself people want to build houses you know and please I, I want us to be very careful because our society is built upon creating an unhealthy pressure upon people to prove points are we together prove points and if you don't deliver yourself from that mess you will rob yourself of the glorious destiny that you have in christ your motive i always examine my motive since the lord taught me this i always examine my motive to make sure that the things that i do are from a genuine motivation to see his glory come i sat down at the airport this afternoon and i was just or this morning and i was just thinking what is this all about we've been up and doing for weeks and from lagos down to abuja down to adamawa and then back tomorrow we're on another trip again you know and it continues like that and i sat down and, and i started asking myself what is all this about is it just a young man trying to build a ministry or is it are you trying to pursue a vocation called preaching or are you trying to advance your name sometimes you need to draw away from the crowd and sit alone how many of us still practice that if you don't you are already dying let me assure you if you are so busy that you cannot take out time white people used to do this this is what i love about white people nigerians keep making the same mistake for decades because we never take out time to think a white man will have a, a vacation away and just go and sit down under a tree in a forest and start asking themselves no matter how stupid the questions are at least they are all to themselves I want us to begin to practice this art of retreat not just locking yourself in the room and praying and sweating there sometimes you just need to walk alone go to the dam and sit down and say where am i going what is all this about i ask myself this all the time especially when we go for meetings and god does great and mighty things and you see the way people are responding oh this is the joshua sermon when i go back i just think and what is this all about because i plan to be doing this for the rest of my life and i'm going to live for a very long time so what is this all about 
just preaching just being one man of god or just so somebody will write a book about great men that god has used and then put my name motive you must take out time in your life to sit down at that point the spirit of god can minister to you he can tell you take note you have started derailing from the pure passion to see god and you started looking for a name for yourself be careful at that point you readjust that's what we call repentance are we together or i see that you love me but you've started having a desire for something else and then you come back most times we are so busy so busy we don't take out time to examine our motive hallelujah your motif is like it's like a metal it can wear and tear and occasionally you need to go back to that threshing floor where you re-examine everything if your motive for ministry for instance is money the day you have the money because you will have it oh in abundance more than you can think of you will never have any passion for god again if your motif is fame what happens when your name is everywhere right if your motif is to have crowds what happens when there are so many people if your motif is to be a celebrity what happens when the spotlight is on you some of us the way you are looking at me like this behind the physical innocence you claim to portray is a very corrupt motive and by corrupt i don't mean immoral necessarily i mean that it's not in sync with that pure desire to see his kingdom come i see the way pastors lobby for power as if it's a is a recharge card they are trying to buy or as if it's another phone they want to change you will think all that passion is because they love the sheep you would think that passion is because they want i mean you see people dry they come out and they're like a skeleton they can't even talk what are you doing fasting say for what say, i'm tired of my my status and you will imagine and say oh god help this guy he will kill himself and god says leave him there just leave him there and you finish your 10 days dry and then nothing happens then they get frustrated and in their frustrating their frustration they look at everyone that god is using and say this person you, you can't be genuine because i did what is supposed to be the requirement and i did not get it motive motive we do night vigils and we pray we run around our parlors our bedrooms we lock ourselves we sit on toilet seats for hours yelling at the gates of heaven oh god give me power or i die we're trying to be like john knox but we don't have his passion and you shout there and be angry and heaven does not even respond motive yet there are people who just lift up their voices and cry one word from heaven and it's like it's like god owes them a debt he must pay the moment they call on him he's obliged to respond i tell you the key is your motive everybody says search my heart oh god say it from the depth of your heart search my heart say try my thoughts and deliver me from any wicked way say it again search my heart oh god try my thoughts oh god and deliver me from any wicked way one mother called me complaining seriously about her daughter and um is someone i know and she said apostle wouldn't you tell your daughter to i mean no marriage no job what, what kind of lady is this I'm, I'm tired of what people are telling me I said mama i love you very much but let me tell you the truth as good as that is it's not enough reason for god to give her a husband because children are not doll babies they are real human beings with destinies and there must be a very serious reason as to why god will bring a man and a woman and commit a destiny for them to raise for decades it cannot just be to avert the shame 
that comes with somebody getting old and not getting married as sincere as that is our motives must be changed are we together this is so powerful it's one of the biggest secrets of this ministry and the hand of god motive very sincere desire to see his glory come nothing more and nothing less hallelujah so your motive that was what i talked about tonight i want to talk very briefly and then we'll pray on the subject of love i call it the mystery of perfection the mystery of perfection i want to talk about love a very powerful secret again that brings the presence and the glory of god upon the life of a man and an individual i love you jesus i worship and adore you just want to tell you that i love you more than anything that's my confession to you i love you jesus i worship and adore you just want to tell you that i love you more than anything i asked the lord recently listen i asked the lord recently a very serious question i said lord is it really true that you want to use everybody can everybody really be used by god or is it that according to his predeterminate counsel there are just a few people because it looks like in every territory there are many people who are not serious with God then a few who are taking God seriously then one or two or three people who are mightily used by God and I asked the Lord recently I said Lord what is what is really the key why, why is it that it looks like you are mising your presence why is it that it looks like you are mising your power what exactly is the key and the Lord told me something he said my people do not have the love of god in their hearts this thing is a very serious issue what i will teach you about love are direct words some of them i'll be writing them the way that i had the lord speak to me he called it the mystery of perfection the reason why people do not rise into the realm of spiritual perfection is because fundamentally they lack love this thing called love our generation gives love a feminine character every time we think love we're thinking this is a feminist word you know it's for ladies it has to do with affection i'm not talking about affection at all the subject of love has been the hindrance to the healing power of god has been the hindrance to financial prosperity coming upon individuals and ministry the subject of love has been the reason why God will never give certain people kingdom influence. That mantle of honor that people desperately crave for. Listen carefully. It's a mystery of perfection. Very, very important. Matthew chapter 5. Jesus began to teach in what we call the Beatitudes. And he was teaching on the subject of love. The Lord is really going to challenge us tonight. And we'll see how far we have derailed from the precepts of God. And we'll see how justified God is. In our not experiencing the fullness of his presence. Let's read from verse 43. We'll be very fast. Are we there? verse 43 it says ye have heard that it has been said 
That means somebody said it. Somebody taught it. Somebody began to advocate it. Oh, it's projected. It says, you have heard that it has been said. What has been said? Thou shalt love your neighbor and do what to your enemy? Hate your enemy. Right? Listen to Jesus' own philosophy. Verse 44. He said, but I say unto you, love your enemies and bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. These are very serious instructions coming from the lips of God. He says, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. 45. He says that he may be what? Children of your father which is in heaven. For he maketh the sun. Oh, look at this. Look at this. He's, he's giving us a character of God. He makes the sun to rise on the evil and on the good and he sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust look up there is a poisonous philosophy that is eating the body of christ fabricated by preachers fabricated by denominations fabricated by individuals that is short-circuiting the new levels of glory from coming to our lives and it's the simple subject of love from God's perspective. Look at what God says should be a Christian's response. Right? But we have been trained, we have designed ourselves around certain very dangerous philosophies. We live in a, a generation that is upset. We, we are obsessed with causes and judgment. Are we together? Especially for preachers. We are always under pressure to prove to people we are anointed. And the moment anybody does anything, we are thinking, I will curse you. Or this and that will happen to you. I will prove to you that if I am a man of God, you will not wake up tomorrow. You know, we live in that kind of thing. And while there is a place and a provision for the justice of God and judgment, we are gradually derailing from the principles of the spirit. As far as love is concerned, we are preoccupied uh, with the, the pressure to try to demonstrate the validity of our anointing. And in so doing, we are rubbing ourselves out of that which God wants for us. Love. The mystery of perfection. The secret that brings people into that, that level of grace. Watch the way preachers fight one another in the body of Christ. And you wonder. You see, let me tell you something. The fact that you are doing something wrong and still seeing the glory of God does not mean God justifies what you are doing. Are we together? I can, for instance, be sleeping around and yet see the anointing of the Spirit upon my life. It, it does not mean God is endorsing this. It is part of the sovereignty and the mercy of God. So sometimes we get into the illusion that the fact that the presence of God is still present in our lives is a justification that every other thing is alright. That philosophy is an ideology that is built as a result of the absence of the secret place for a long time. Is God speaking to us? There are all kinds of things in the body of Christ that are destroying people and and the, the problem there is believers fellow believers are the worst hit in all of this we have churches that attack one another some even very openly are we together now we have men of god that attack one another i think the the latest one in the body of christ that is so ugly is the fight between the grace and law right that has even become a war. It's like they have drawn a line. If you're for grace, this side. If you're for law, this side. No. How many ministers have fight men like W.F. Kumui? Right? 
because probably deeper life people don't wear earrings they don't wear this there are people who have hated that man of god and resented him how many people have fought men like pastor chris how many people have fought different people with philosophies listen to me let me tell you the reason why we will never see the power of god that we desire enshrined in our hearts is this ideology of hatred and bitterness we fight people around our lives let me give you a few points let me not run um the lord began to tell me three things that has demonstrated that we do not really have the love of god number one this is what the lord revealed to me the first sign god gave me that the body of christ is not working in love is that we focus on actions above intentions we focus on actions above intentions this is a dangerous ideology where you judge men based on actions and not just intentions the bible tells us this it says man looks at the outward appearance in other words the physical manifestation but God discerns the motive behind our activities. Are we together? So for instance, for instance, I can be a rapper. Let me just give you an instance. I can be a rapper, a Christian rapper. Are we together now? And um, simply because I can come up and I'm just rapping. You can write me off and just look at me and think because I'm rapping I look like somebody who sleeps around. I look like somebody who is not serious with God. And use the actions rather than the intentions. It's the number one mistake that we are making in the body of Christ. That the Lord revealed to me that is a revelation that the love of God is truly not grounded in our hearts. We focus on actions. While actions are very important. Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. But many times, if you really really want to discern things by the spirit you must sustain a technology in the spirit to discern intentions beyond actions are we together now a preacher may be preaching for instance and maybe communication barrier or something like that he may make a statement like um God's primary assignment is to kill you. Something like that. And all of a sudden a newspaper says, God's primary assignment is to kill you. Caption. Heresy preached by A and B and C. And because we live in a generation that is gullible to hear bad things, we always want to check. Ah, ah, God's assignment is to kill you. Nobody goes to listen to the remaining part of the message and discern the intention. Are we together? And it is based on that we have libeled men of God. It is based on that we have libeled people. How many people are moving around and saying, my mother told me, I, you will see if you succeed. No. To mean that her actions meant she's, she's happy so that you will fail. Is that not true? And then it's, it gets so bad when you now go to a meeting where they say anybody standing against your family, that bed, where, even if it's your mother, you say, yes, even if it's my mother, you take that anger and say, my mother told me, or maybe my father said you are a failure. They may not really mean it. They may be communicating pain at that time. If you have the ability to look at intentions beyond actions, you are a wise man. Intentions. As I walk with people, I always try to discern the intentions, the intent of certain things. Physical actions are not guaranteed. They are not the best way of truly revealing our intentions. A wife can come to her husband, for instance, maybe out of frustration about his carelessness, and she can make a statement out of pain and say, look, if you, don't, if you stop giving me money, make sure you are not going to be eating in this house. And the husband says, oh, if I don't give you money, I will not eat in this house. If I give you money, I eat in this house. You claim you are a deacon in your church. Is that what they are teaching you? No, husband, look at the intention. What your wife is trying to say is, I'm hurt by your irresponsibility. And I would love you to do something about it. 
Are we together? Listen, you, are, you become an exceptional leader, an exceptional believer, if you sustain the ability to discern intentions. We have, we have created seditions in our families. We have grouped ourselves into two. A family of five people. Father and the, his favorite. Mother and the other three people. Because of our ability to judge intentions. You look at a man whose face is like that. Whether he's happy or not, his face is the same. You just look at him and say, this guy is a wicked person. You look wicked, I'm sure you are wicked. Whereas that person is the nicest person you will ever meet in your life. Have you seen people like that? I don't like this guy. His face is mean. It's not the person's fault. The person is like that. Your, your face is this. You will never get a wife. Or you will never do this. We, we judge actions more than intentions. A woman comes to Jesus with an alabaster box. Are we together? The Bible lets us know that this woman has had a challenging past. And then she gathered one year's wages. Are we together now? Beautiful woman. She steps into a room. And everybody is sitting there. Religious people. Together with the disciples. And this woman comes to Jesus sincerely. And gets down on her knees. And the first thing many people are thinking is seduction. Jesus, you are in trouble. Jesus, you are in trouble. Your ministry is about to die. Nobody is thinking worship. A woman is coming with a genuine motive. Please, while you are laughing, take seriously. These are the things that the Lord told me. They are not things that I guessed. Destroying the body of Christ. The Bible says to the pure, all things are pure. When your mind is corrupted, it becomes the vista from which you interpret everything. Hallelujah. And she kneels down before him. And the Bible says she takes her alabaster box, breaks it at his feet. Right? And the aroma and the, the fragrance just rises as an incense of worship. That represented her worth for one year. And she broke it. And the Bible says she used her hair. Hey! Her hair. And then began to clean his feet. And Jesus did not do anything about it. I'm sure the disciples will say Jesus you better don't play games with us here what is going on madam where do you know this guy that you come and break alabaster box and Judas ah why are you doing this you would have gathered everything and let's give it to the poor the bible only records what Judas said he didn't tell us what the remaining said I can assure you he was not the only person that spoke But Jesus said, don't, don't stop her. That was the word of God, the bread of life. He was looking at this woman's innocence. And he said, everywhere they talk about him, they will also make reference to this. Are we together now? He was able to look at her intentions. A woman who was caught in adultery, they never brought the man. She ran and came to Jesus Christ. Right? I mean, they pushed that there and they said, this and that and that. And Jesus looked at them. And he saw that woman. She felt sorry for herself. She felt sad. And she was just hoping there would be a hand to hold her and say, you can start again. And Jesus looked at all the psychophants and the religious people. And he says, he who has no sin among you, be the first to cast stones. When you learn to judge the intentions of people, I counsel people a lot. Are we together? And I talk to pastors, I talk to leaders. There are times a man of God can come and meet me and say, man of God, I need you to pray for me. I love God, but I'm dying, I'm dying of immorality. I can easily look at that person and say, you? Ah, are your members aware that you are dying of immorality? I look sincerely, and the only thing I tell them is, rebels don't come to God. They run away from him. When you come to God, it's a sign that you are not a rebel. And I look at him. How many times have we injured the wounded soldiers in the body of Christ? Because we look beyond 
we don't look at intentions we look at actions are we together now love a husband looks at the wife and finds out that there is another man who has been suffering and out of compassion she's trying to help him and he says if you are having an affair tell me now let me kill you and kill myself why don't you come down and say okay I, I, I see your motive that you really want to help this person but I'm a bit uncomfortable with it why don't you structure it and do it this way and that do you know this simple thing I've, I'm telling you has broken marriages has scattered churches are we together has produced eternal enemies men of God who never see eyeball to eyeball brothers and sisters all kinds of people because we are experts at judging actions above intentions learn this tonight if you are in this you are short-circuiting the glory of God from your life meaning he can never send to you a lady who comes to you and say man of God I've been involved in abortion 12 times he said young lady are you seeing that door is still open forward march no no god is love the bible says for he causes the sun to rise on both the just and unjust part of my desire in life is that my hands will remain open as a place of succor for wounded people that every time they look around and there is nowhere they can run to, they can find a heaven. That we can clean their tears and wash the garments together. And by the grace of God, Koinonia will remain that place. We will never drive our wounded soldiers. We will never drive people that are far away. There are people who have given their lives to Christ. But for some reason, because of pressure, maybe family and all of that, they derailed. And they got into all kinds of things. Every time we meet those people, do you go to church now? Say, man of God, I've not gone to church. You are such a stupid person. Jesus helped you. You would have died that day. Blah, 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 blah. And you are a disappointment to the kingdom. Huh? This is what you are doing. Whereas that gentleman or that lady, if you would look at their intentions, what they are saying is, I need help. Can somebody please help me? We want crowd. I wrote a song years ago. One day I'll sing it for you. It's called The Bandage is Larger Than the Wound. Powerful song. If I produced an album, I would have blessed people and made money from that song. Worship team, I will give you people when you are ready to write your Very powerful. The bandage is larger than the wound When his loving arms surround you he binds that broken heart and then I, I can't remember the rest but i mean what a beautiful song imagine somebody singing that kind of song to you come on when was the last time someone ran to you and believed that they are coming to you you will be able to understand them one of the greatest gifts people can give to you is that trust that you have the ability to understand them do you know how people crave to be understood are we together now God that's why God took out time to send the Holy Spirit so that you can understand him it pains the Lord when we misunderstand him when people turn and say God if you were alive why did my father die if you were alive why did my mother die if you were alive why did I lose the job so he sends the Holy Spirit to teach you the word because in teaching the word, you will correct the wrong ideologies you've had about him. So he will begin to teach you all the laws of the kingdom. And in it, you will now look and say, wow, so my poverty was not caused by you. There is something I did not know. God, you are a faithful God. And I'm sorry for blaming you for something you do not have a hand in it. God left the Holy Spirit so that he will be understood listen come to a point in your life where you learn to judge intentions behind motives i think two years ago a man sent me a text his daughter slapped him real daughter biological daughter gave the father a slap and spoke all kinds of nonsense against the man and said this and that and that that if he plays with her she will arrange 
uh, uh, what they call it, all these boys that don't have anything they are doing, you just give them anything and they come and beat somebody for you. Now, he says that they will make that arrangement and come and beat the father. The man was wise because the ego of a man will not tolerate that. He will first kill the lady first before he will look for the man of God that will raise her back to life. But then this man did something. I'm, I'm not just opening up people's secrets. I just want to use it as a point. The man did something that taught me a lesson on fatherhood. When the daughter slapped him and did everything, he picked up his phone and called me. It was ringing, ringing. I saw the number ringing and then I picked up. And then he said, ask Susan person. I said, how are you, sir? It's been a while. And he says, you will not believe if I tell you this, Apostle. I said, what is it, sir? He said, can you imagine my daughter? Of course, it doesn't mean he was calm and soft. He was boiling and angry. But he was able to contain himself. My daughter that I gave birth to takes a hand and slaps me because she has begun to follow men that are my age. You know, and all, you know how men talk when they are angry. And etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And he did this and that. And then I began to talk and I told him, I said, Daddy, I, I know that this is very bad and this and that. And then he calmed down. And then he said, you know what, Apostle, this is, this is where the story is. He said, it reminds me of what we do to the Lord all the time. I felt ashamed at once. I just, I felt, oh God, how many times did I slap you from morning till now? And then the man said, I just wanted to express it to you. I'm her father. I'll walk on it. Until this lady left, she was still attending Koinonia. Ever sorry for that attitude. And today her and her father, I may not call them best of friends, but she honors him with her life because he did something to her. He told me that later in the evening he called her and he sat her down. And he says, any lady that disrespects her parents will die. The Bible says it. And began to talk to the lady. And I was surprised. I was very surprised that the lady booked for counseling. When she came for counseling, she never knew that the father had spoken to me. I wanted to see what she was going to come and meet me for. And she opened up and told me, said, I did something that is unthinkable. I think I'm cursed. I said, no, no, you are not cursed. This and that and that and that. And in my presence, she called the father and apologized to him. And I have a lot of wine. I carried one wine. I say, apology is not enough. Carry this wine, pray in tongues on it and go and apologize. Also apologize to your mother. That's her husband you slap. And all of that. And everything was over. Now, listen, listen. What is the point of all this story? The father, though angry, had the ability to see the motive. The motivation. And was able to contain himself. And by it, he won the lady. Imagine if he fought her and and injured her or did something fire for fire never produces a solution it ends up in ashes this is what many pastors have done this is what many people have done some of us sitting right here this is what we have done to our family members we have brought seditions and bitter hatred among one another especially for families that are polygamous i'm sorry to say it, but i have to address it families that are polygamous we are experts at creating intentions i saw stepmother standing near the pot and they said nobody should eat there's trouble no 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 no, no. learn to judge intentions say i receive grace to look beyond actions and see the intentions of people your roommate comes in and she's edgy and moody and all of that and you don't take out time to find out. Probably she saw her results and things were bad. Or they just called her at home and said something had happened. And you just look and say, smile, Jerry, and say, please, 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 I'm not in the mood. Say, sorry, oh, don't ever talk to us too again if you are like that. No. Learn to look at the intentions of people. There are people who have passed me, for instance. Sometimes they pass me, they don't even greet me. I don't turn and say, come, oh, let's, let's define something here. No, 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 no. No. Men will love you and they will give their life for you if they know 
that you are one person who has sustained the ability to look beyond the motives. Hallelujah. Years ago, I managed one very serious issue. One guy got a lady pregnant and um, the families were coming for counseling and they came and met here. They didn't plan to come. But the two families came to report the situation and then they met there. It was, it was a catastrophic event that happened. I mean, um, I, I say all of these things just to, just to help you. It was a serious thing. You know, and of course, you know it's not going to be a bed of roses. There will be tearing people and all of that and, and so on and so forth. But the first thing I tried to discern, I wasn't really concerned about the loved ones. I was looking at the individuals. Forgiveness is useless when there is no repentance. Let me tell you something you need to understand. Forgiveness is useless when there is no repentance. If, if I walk up to Tosin today and I insult her, and I just say, sorry, sorry, with the intention of insulting her again, if occasion, it's called rebellion. Forgiveness is only useful. When there is repentance, what is repentance? A genuine state of brokenness and a change of heart. So that you do not misunderstand what I'm saying and then allow people to take you for a ride. Forgiveness is useless when there is no repentance. The second thing the Lord showed me that communicates lack or the absence of the love of God in the body of Christ and among believers is that we hate people and we fight people for sustaining perspectives that are different from ours. This is a big one. We hate people and we fight people for sustaining a paradigm that is different from ours is a major mistake I've seen in the body. The moment your thinking is not like my own Joshua Selman, I hate you. The moment my perspective is not like your own, I hate you. And this is probably a, a very big one, especially among denominations. Because we have tremendous hatred. There are people who will see a lady or a guy from another ministry or another denomination and never knowing the person, they already have anger and hatred and resentment. There are people for, for putting on a watch like this, you can already be angry. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? When you just dressing well is enough to create anger. There are people when you see somebody who doesn't dress very well, you are still angry. It's, 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 a, it's an issue of concern, but not enough to be that angry. We fight people who do not sustain similar ideologies. This is what causes trouble between siblings at home. This is what causes trouble between pastors. Are we together now? Listen, if you really want to love people, you must have an ability to respect people's perspective about life. It is very important. The whole world cannot be Koinonia. The whole world cannot be Joshua Selman. Let me guarantee you if the whole world is like me, this world will be a mess. I repeat, if the whole world is like me, this world will be a mess. I know you like me because I'm preaching. You have not seen how boring other areas of my life are. Trust me, if you know how boring other areas of my life are, how about coming to meet me wanting to crack a joke and all I'm telling you is scriptures. Do you like that? Well, forget about the guys. Ladies, do you like that? Do you want to marry that kind of person? <laughs> are we together now? You can see the ladies responding. It's easy to see me preach and think, oh, this is wonderful because you are seeing revelation. But let me tell you one truth. Listen, brothers and sisters. If you don't learn to respect people for their perspectives. If I make you, if I make Pastor Femi, for instance, the president of ENI for one year, you'll be amazed at the remarkable changes that will happen in the ministry. You will find out that Koinonia may step into another dimension.
better ideas, better creativity. However, you must have the ability to um, respect people's ideologies. This is why some pastors can never be invited to preach in other churches aside from their churches. I've preached almost everywhere. I've preached in Serubim and Seraphim. They like me. Oh, two of their branches, I've preached there. I've preached in Anglican. I've preached in uh, um, 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 Catholic, Equa, Cooking, Lutheran. I've preached Open Air Crusade. I preach all kinds of things. The one with no name, youth group, charismatic, everything. You know why? Listen, among other things, I have sustained an ability to respect. Listen, don't major on the minors and minor on the majors. I give you an instance. You go to minister in a charismatic meeting, for instance, and then you know uh, um, they are they are. They are making their, their uh, recitations and all of that. And you just come because you are a pure Pentecostal charismatic. You put your hand and you are wondering what the hell is going on here. What are all these people doing? That terrible childish attitude will put you off. When you study global leadership, one of the principles of global leadership is the ability to be accommodating yet not compromising. The ability, the Bible puts it this way. It says you are in the world, but not of the world. You don't have to bend to your values, but your, your ability to tolerate people's differences must be elastic enough to accommodate people with different perspectives and ideologies. There are churches where if you don't dance, you are in trouble. Immediately they are dancing, people are dancing. And you just stand, you are just moving around. They say, oh God, please, we dance in this church. No, you, you have no right to harass anybody that way. That's bullying, that's intimidation. Again, in a church where people are generally conservative, someone is just dancing to God and dancing alone, and you just stop him and say, sorry, uh, I don't know what exactly is happening to you, but I think you have, no, it's still wrong. Are we together? If in your house you eat with fork, spoon, and knife, if you come to my house, I say, please bring warm water for me. We don't eat swallow with, with fork and spoon and knife in our house. You should be able to respect that. Not to look and say, oh God, we were all we all grew up in UK and we respect. No, 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 no. You don't do that. When was the last time you were able to be bending enough to accommodate people's differences? And then you will see why many churches are losing members because of the rigidity. They are unbending. There are so many churches, their youths are leaving and running away because they, they have put stringent conditions and will not have that sense of accommodation. I remember when Koinonia started, I got a lot of text messages. Some said, look, let's go heal song, let's sing contemporary. Others said, no, 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 no. We are not proud of Africa with Nigerians the way you do. Let's be singing our local songs. And I said, thank God, God didn't call us. God called me. I will listen to God. If you are not comfortable, come and sit down after praise and worship. There is still a path for you to enjoy. Are we together? love don't fight people that sustain a perspective that is not your own there are churches for instance there are men of god who preach with audio visuals you see them they they have to use powerpoint are we together because of the nature of the teaching grace upon their life they take root words together and put them down and they want to make you understand you may come from a, a ministry where the moment they say praise the lord somebody shouting under the anointing now you go to a place where you sit down and somebody is trying to join this word and say please i need solid food i i, I what is all this uh, don't i know the meaning of art or of no we don't have that accommodation is robbing us we never are able to see the power of god there are churches that i go to i know that they don't pray in tongues publicly i will minister there you will never hear me pray in tongues once it doesn't mean i've stopped believing in it but i must be able to make that adjustment so that the people can receive are you getting what i'm saying now absolutely there are churches that may not give that kind of accommodation for you to be jumping around like this 
you can't go to a church for instance a core orthodox church and when you are shouting the next thing you climb a chair and you are giving an illustration or you come and tap one elder and say prof come 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 out come on let me use you as an example you are messing up listen learn what i'm giving you wisdom learn this some of us out of our zeal you think everywhere is like your church no there are churches for putting water on this table you are you are going to answer a lot of questions not even to talk of five alive or banana or apple you are in trouble apple what for but there are churches if you don't do that they will query you are we together you come and you see banana and orange don't just come and say are they why are they not eating at home now no. don't do that i'm teaching you how to love the body because these are the things that cause trouble are we together This keyboard that is playing now, there are churches where a man of God stands everywhere, becomes silent. No drums, no moving around, no camera, no snapping. No even saying yes. You know, like you respond, but no, 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 you don't do this. This thing you are doing now, this laughing, no, you don't do that. You are silent and you maintain an attitude of sober reflection. That's all right. That's all right. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There are very few hymns I don't know. That's why when I get to any church, hymn book or not, once you raise the hymn, I will sing it. I think it was in, 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 in um, All Saints or so that I went to minister, I think a year or two or so ago. And then uh, I was telling them that I can, I can recite the Apostles' Creed beginning to end. I was a seminarian. I still am. Archbishop Benjamin Kwashi prayed, prayed, prayed and hoped that I would become a seminarian. But uh, God just decided to call me. I'm still a seminarian. <laughs> Hallelujah. What is your level of accommodation in the body of Christ? Can an Equa church invite you as a pastor and you can go and bless the people without breaking people's hearts and doing all kinds of nonsense? Can a Catholic church invite you and you go and get blessed? This is how some of us behave even when we go to certain families. You see men behave like that. You go to the family, you find out that they remove their shoes in front. And you just step and march and enter and they say sorry sir they are even trying to tell you you embarrass the person you are taking and the lady is trying to say my brother i don't know how to tell you but please just remove your shoe my mother is a very neat person i'm not ready for trouble here and they say what is all that according to what the bible says if you enter he that receives a prophet and you start bringing all kinds of childish things and you leave that home and cause trouble for the people the mother now looks and says, are these the kind of useless pastors that you move around with? Let me not see you with any of them. You must be accommodating, yet not compromising. I will never fight anybody who sustains an ideology that is different from me, including the Muslims. Most of the people, most of the people who have the cars, that's why there are many churches Muslims hate them because they hate Muslims. Are we together now? No. Terrorism and, a, and, and an extremist mindset is not the same. I have met a lot of Muslims that are absolutely nice people. Of course, anybody without the Holy Spirit, there's no guarantee to the person. But I'm telling you, there are people who have been able to sustain certain abilities. One, one of my drivers used to come his... his um, he has some three children. I've never seen well-behaved Hausa girls like that. They came to visit me one time during Salah. And after, you know, they brought small food for me to appreciate me and all of that. And then I gave all of them one 1,000 naira. And all of them, in concert, they kept tiny children. Ale Saka the Alheri. Ale Saka the Alheri. I said, my goodness, when was the last time a tongue-talking Christian child? You say, baby, how are you? You say, bring it. And he's even crying. This is what we have trained our children to do. Yet we have the audacity. Listen. The Bible says he sends the sun. He makes the sun to rise on both the evil and the good. The only place where you see love is when an accident happens. Everybody rushes to rescue them. Because they don't want to care who is who. 
there are some of you your destiny help us sustain a paradigm that is different from yours and if only you could make that adjustment they can take you from where you are maybe the boss you went to look for a job and you found out that the boss comes from a denomination you hate and you just turn and say this is it see let me tell you the truth if you don't change your outlook about the body of Christ the body of Christ can never be your church alone I've told you again and again stop thinking koinonia think kingdom koinonia is only a small fraction of what God is doing Joshua Selman is only a contributor to the big thing that God is doing that's why you never see anybody come and stand up here and say I called upon the God of Joshua Selman call upon it wonderful but in your room there don't come and infect people with an ideology that makes it look like it is just God of Joshua Selman that answers God of this God of every true believer answers if he doesn't answer you don't know him you don't know his ways or he's not your God in the first place many men of God are embarrassed so you go to a place how many pastors brothers and sisters go for meetings and many of them cannot preach because of the presence of certain pastors they go somewhere i'm a grace preacher now i can't preach because this person believes in deliverance or believes in casting out of devils or the person who is preaching deliverance now sees another person who particularly doesn't believe maybe everybody let people listen i want you to know as i say this especially for ministries because i'm speaking apostolically listen listen to me listen to me i want you to know that fundamentally the motivation of every true believer is to love jesus and to serve him truly this is the common denominator that binds us all are we together now there are people i love passionately who we do not share the same spiritual ideologies they may not be comfortable with the dimension of the operation of the holy spirit in my life i may not be com comfortable with certain levels of revelation but it does not is not enough reason whatsoever we crack jokes about other things listen the key to friendship is to concentrate on your similarity not your differences when you want to make money focus on your difference but when you want to make friends, focus on your similarity. The anger and the bitterness is growing in the church. The enmity is even becoming, have you seen people? We are the members of this church. We are the members of this sect. We are the members of this prayer house. We are the members of this place. And then these ones come. We are the members of this. We are the ones for Apostle Joshua Selman. This one, we are the ones for this and that. These ones, we are Anglican. These ones, we are this. And all of them, and women of God, are destroying the body of Christ because we are raising people who are like political loyalists to a party rather than raising people who are kingdom conscious. Let me tell you what is making. If we don't correct this, most of our youths, for instance, who come to meetings like this and taste certain superior levels of the word of God and the power of God, some of them go back to their churches and then they don't go back with a heart of love. They go back with cynicism and hatred. The moment the pastor mounts up the podium, they are angry because they are trying to compare what he's saying with what Apostle Joshua Selman says. And they feel this guy, even an usher in Kononia, knows more revelation than this guy. What did you even call your name? If you are doing that, stop it now. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Stop it right now. There is more to a pastor than the ability to preach. Wisdom. Experience. Pain. There are too many things that qualify a man to be a shepherd. Preaching is only one of them. You may differ in ideologies. But I want you to know that you must sustain that ability. That whether it is Anglican or Catholic or deeper life or cherubim and seraphim or whatever it is. The truth is that any true believer that loves the Lord with his heart and professes the name of the Lord Jesus Christ deserves that reception and there are times that to blend you may need to make adjustments even though temporal adjustments you must make the adjustments if i go to minister for instance in maybe all saints and the rest i'll not start um, raising songs like um, shalom shalom no 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 how many of them know that song there 
I'm going to raise a powerful hymn. And you see our mothers lift up their hands and thank God. I will adjust in a way that will open up their spirits to receive what God is saying. Is God giving us wisdom? This has destroyed the body of Christ. Some come and say, I am for Paul. Others come and say, I am for Apollos. Others come and say, I am for Agabus. And we men of God love it. We pride ourselves in all this political thing. There are men of God who never see eyeball to eyeball. They never pick one another's cult. In Nigeria, men of God have sent assassins to other people. No, no. Are you not amazed that whether it's Pastor Chris's crusade or Benny Hinn's crusade or Renhard Bonke's crusade or um, um, Dr. Olukoya's crusade or W.F. Kumui's crusade, you are seeing miracles happen. You are seeing God. At least we know that these people love God and they are serious. You can't say they are fake. Are we together now? It should tell you that if the same God who showers his anointing and grace upon them he knows what he's looking at. The exact requirement. Brothers and sisters, let's not forget that it's the same heaven we are going to. Heaven doesn't have branches. So this annoyance and this resentment that we have against one another, it should never be that way. Lord, make us instruments of your peace where there is hatred let your love increase lord make us instruments of your peace walls of pride and prejudice shall cease when we are your instruments never become an object of division in the body of christ don't become the reason why the church becomes divided hence powerless don't be the one sowing seeds the one sitting down to gossip and compare men of god and compare who has revelation and who has anointing in the meeting don't let that devilish thing be part of your life you must be able to embrace the diversity of the body god knows the reason why he left every denomination the full church is what will reveal christ any denomination you kick out will produce an incomplete church let me tell you the truth those of us who have this religious advocacy to wipe out other denominations and eventually have our denomination stand no sir no sir is deception from the pit of hell I came from an orthodox background before I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and I started walking in the power of God and I thank God for that orthodox background because it's what has kept character in me right now I'm sorry to say it, but a lot of Pentecostal charismatics because of our understanding of the kingdom there is a lot of carelessness and imbalance that's why a pastor can be preaching yet he's sleeping around and he says no problem whatever happens is I mean God is a merciful God that foundation they didn't get me filled with the Holy Spirit but they gave me a basis of understanding I remember then in the seminary when when we will have you must your quiet time it was it was now he's, he's now i think he's now uh is he a venerable now i can't I, I don't know what he is right now god bless him forever forever a man who changed my life he wrote a quiet time manual who will recite scriptures every day every day whether you like it or not you must recite scripture your quiet time manual, you must do it. Whether mechanically or religiously, you shall must do it. Because they, they supervise all of those things. I was trained in the Anglican. You never greet somebody standing to look at the person like this. This is how you greet, bowing down. No matter how tall you are. If two of you are fighting outside, three things will happen. One, they will call you and have a brief Bible study. Second, they will weep all of you. The offender and the offendee, the weak part of you. Once they are done, number three, one will kneel down and you pray, lay your hands and pray for him. He will stand up you, you will kneel down and he will pray for you. I'm serious. Case closed. I told you we are raising a, 
when we start our schools, that's the way we are going to train the people. I tell you, you can bring your children to our school and go to bed because we will train them, whip out flesh, add the things that are of God and produce people of character. We don't just want people who are doing well. We want people who are living well. Hallelujah. But right now, what do we have in the body of Christ? I go to minister all the time. And the moment I'm entering, usually there are crowds of people. Everybody looking. Where is he coming? And you see different men of God trying to square their shoulder. Me too. My name is Pastor This. I'm the pastor of this, this revival movement. And I just come and I greet them. Well done, sir. When I come up stage, I start by saying I honor every man, every woman of God, the pastors in this city. We see and we appreciate your contribution to the advancement of the kingdom. And you see all of them squaring up. Now you are talking. You are appreciating us too. And all of a sudden, their heart becomes open to the meeting. People who would never, some of them maybe even talked about me. But just that five minutes, their hearts are open. Listen, listen. People fight you when you try to trivialize their contributions. Never trivialize people's contributions. No matter how little. Don't look at your father and mother one day and say, I've had many people in my life who have, who have built me. I'm happy to say you are one of them. No, they are not one of them. They are your parents. Are we together now? Yeah. People usually fight you when you give them an impression that their contributions are small or worthless. There are ministries I may not really have any much revelation to learn from them, but I can learn leadership. I can learn excellence. There are ministries I can learn prayer. Part of the reasons why God has anointed me so much is because my heart is open over the body of Christ. I love the body of Christ, genuinely. Take away the hatred you have for certain denominations, certain men of God. You know it, I've told you. I never talk against any man of God. I don't care who. Never. You will never hear it from my mouth. I repented years ago and it will never happen. If I ever mention the name of a man of God is to say something commendable because I myself will stand before the white throne and I will be judged. You're my brother, you're my sister. So take me by your hand. Together we will walk until he comes. There's no what that stands between us. Hallelujah. So it's a major mistake. How much do you love people and are able to accommodate? There are people who are talkatives. They are noisemakers. All they are falling down has not removed it. Don't try to change it. Create an adjustment. Their mouths are like that. You are going to frustrate yourself trying to change it. There are others who are cons it would take you praying and fasting to get good morning out of them. Get used to it. Are we together now? I like this man of God, but I hate his wife. She talks too much. Sorry, she's his wife. She's already married. Accommodated. She plans to be his wife for all the lifespan of that ministry. So if you plan to be a member in that church, get used to all the erratic attitude. Get to the emotionalism. Go past it and focus on what God is doing. Are we together now? Never hate people for holding reservations. Don't look at Muslims moving around and the next thing you just look and say, I hate these people. No, you have been devilish. That's a Luciferian spirit because God sends, he makes the sun to rise on both the evil and the good. The bosses that convey you here after Koinonia, Every time I come out, I look at the people. They are greeting me and I greet them. I was telling protocol the other day. I said, make sure that we buy minerals for them. And we're happy. We crack jokes. We may have differences in faith and belief. And everybody has the responsibility to choose. But there are many other things that bind us. How many neighbors never talk face to face? Because one person is Hare Krishna. One person is... is, is uh, a, a member of this thing and you say I, I would never me enter this house and they bring food for you say carry your food and walk back I know what you did with it no you don't do that why don't you look away from the differences I may not believe in deliverance I may not believe in demons 
I may not believe in whether uh, trouser or hair or whatever it is. I may not believe there is heaven. I may not believe there is this, but find a common ground. We are all human beings. Are we together? Never hate people. Listen, you know what hatred is? Hatred is, is a bitter dislike. It's a satanic thing. A bitter dislike. And usually, that hatred comes when people sustain a perspective that is different from yours. There are preachers who when they go to preach and they see that there is an interpreter, maybe somebody interpreting in Hausa or interpreting in another language, they put off their angry. That's why I love Reinhard Bonke. He's gone to almost every African continent with their attitudes. I, I watched one of his videos. He went to one African country. Africans, all students, we know how to disgrace ourselves. He went to one African country and before he even settled down, they took coconut and, and then they, 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 they scraped, they created O in the coconut and removed everything and told him to drink the water. And when he was drinking it, they were clapping. I said, is this how to honor a man of God? Don't stretch people beyond their limit. You believe in coconut as a way of welcome can keep it and you are stretching the man too much this guy came all the way from germany why come and put all of that pressure on him but you notice reinhard bonke if he's going to lagos you will see him wear agbada and you are wondering agbada many of our white missionaries do it right you see them struggling to tie this thing women tie. they can't do it well but they are doing it anyway and every time you see that it blesses you love do you love the body this looks simple but it may be the reason why many of our prayers are not answered because we do not sustain that love for God and for the body of Christ. These are the contemplations that the Lord himself shared with me. We have extreme hatred for people who sustain a different perspective. We pray in tongues so much, yet there is hatred that is locked up in our mind. We fast so much, yet there is hatred that is locked up in our minds. No. Remember, the Bible says, even faith works by love. Are we together? So I carry that heart of love. I prayed and fasted dry for 10 days. And I carry that attitude of hatred for the body of Christ. And I come and lay my hands on Pastor Femi and the power refuses to move. And you find out that there are few miracles happening in our meetings. I tell you, that's why many men of God have very little miracles and the manifestations of the Spirit. No. Never hate things that are different from your perspective. Don't hate people. Closely related to the subject of hatred, the Lord asked me to talk about this. I don't know why, but He, he put in my heart the issue of temper and anger. Look up. Let me talk about it for five minutes. The Lord began to talk to me. Do you know that what we call temper, you know what I mean? Hot tempered attitude, anger. Do you know it's a spirit? Look up please. Koinonia, are you aware that anger is a spirit? Yeah. How many believers, especially the men, are hot tempered? It's a terrible attitude. When you are involved in any ministry of deliverance, you know that the classic way of identifying the presence of demons in a person is that rage and temper becomes the expression. How many believers and they are going for a meeting and before the meeting, the man beats up his wife, beats her up and then steps into koinonia and is happy and says god is going to move now and you wonder why the power of god does not move you are trying to give a word of knowledge you are just giving nonsense because faith works by love say it after me faith works by love you finish gossiping about a man of god and a family and tearing people down and you stand and you want the glory of god to move around no it does not work like that love Oftentimes you will hear that Jesus was moved with compassion. Listen, if you are a hot-tempered person in this place tonight, if nobody has told you you need help, are we together? I don't care who you are. If you are hot-tempered, humble yourself, you need help. You will never be able to love people when you are hot-tempered. Do you know why? 
Because people will do things every day that will annoy you. How many days? Every day. Pastors, your wife, your husband, and all of that. Is killing people in the body of Christ. That's where all this revelation of causes and destroying people all of a sudden comes. No. People will offend you. Members will do a lot of childish things. Especially if you are a pastor. Anybody who is a pastor or a leader here knows that working with people is a difficult thing. Because people's ideologies can be very interesting. But do you sustain that ability to be cool and calm? Many marriages are breaking today because of temper. Hot temper. The lady hears the man talking about something. Maybe he's talking to his sister. And he says, sweetheart, how are you? And the woman keeps quiet. The man doesn't know what is happening. The next thing he sees, um, a knife. She just stabs him and says, I didn't mean to do it, but you just killed your husband. As a true Christian, I don't care what degree of tongues you are praying. When you become temperate, the ability to absorb pain and pressure and yet be calm. Listen, especially for we young people, is one big secret of a healthy marriage. Hot tempered people are dangerous people. They can do anything. See, closely related to that, every time you are angry, let me tell you how to manage it. Keep quiet. Because when you speak in anger, the devil will take hold of your tongue and you will say things you cannot retreat back. The Bible says the birds can carry your words and take it far beyond your reach. If you are angry at my preaching, leave Koinonia. After all, this is other. And then next Sunday, next week, you come and you find out that all the members are angry. They are going to say, no, no, no. I don't mean that. What is the meaning of that? Can't I at least be angry? No, no. Never justify anger and that hot tempered attitude. God is speaking to many of us here. Great people. How many of us have been robbed of the opportunity? We have lost friends because of temper. We have lost relationships because of temper. We have lost destiny helpers because of temper. We have lost anointings and graces because of temper. Tonight God is calling. To love people, your heart must be very accommodating. Factor it as part of your life that people will annoy you every day. Every day. Hot temper. It's too much in the body of Christ. I watch with shock the way preachers are hot tempered. I've seen men of God talk to their wives in ways I could not believe. A man turns and talks to his wife as if she's a piece of rag. I counseled a case recently. A woman who was thrown away by her husband, a pastor. For two months, she was sleeping outside. Outside doesn't mean another place. Outside, on bare ground. She will carry a wrapper in the night and you will throw, throw her outside. Two months, God is my witness. Yet that man will come to church on Sunday and dance and sing. Who is deceiving who? Temper. How many pastors beat their wives? I mean, beat to matching them and say, I will kill you. How many pastors punish members because of anger? Kneel down, raise your hand. I see this, I see this is the paid school fees. They, they, you, you gave them money to come to. People innocently come to your church. You punish them and make them look like idiots. All these things we are doing, let me tell you, is very, very bad. And the Lord is not pleased with it. Temper. Say in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. I receive grace. To work on anger and temper. Yes. You will destroy more people than you know when you are an angry person. Especially for our sisters. Do you know the Bible says it is better to stay on the rooftop of your house than to live with an angry woman. Think about that. That you carry your mattress on your zinc to stay there rather than living with a woman that is contentious and angry. These are the things that should circuit the power of God. So we are fasting. We are praying. But there is temper. There is resentment. Do you know that if I'm angry with Tosin and I hate her. If God gives me a prophetic word for Tosin. That word will be corrupted. Because that word will rub off on my unrenewed. My angry mind. 
Especially if what God is telling her is a good thing. Prophesy to her that God will lift her. And I will now say God will lift you, but God is saying you should mind the way you talk to men of God now. That one is no longer God. <laughs> Are we together? Men of God and churches are trying to make men like them and not like Jesus. While it is true that when you become a leader, you influence people, you must be sure that the person you are following is following Jesus. Not following a denomination, not following a geo, not following a, 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 a priest or pope or whatever. Following Jesus. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Some of you may never appreciate what I'm saying now until you see what these attributes will take out from your life. They will take more. Some of our mothers and people here who are a bit elderly will understand exactly what I'm saying because these little attributes have cheated a lot of people. They have lost opportunities that may never come again save by the mercy of God. People have lost jobs. They entered interview places and and they try to make them angry on purpose. I hope you know that. They can make you angry on purpose. Just job interview. You step in and they say, what kind of stupid girl are you? You step in, you can't greet us, you can't do everything. And they say, what the heck? Is it job? And you bounce out and go and continue your suffering. You are the one suffering. Whereas you fail the test. I remember one gentleman who was ringing, ringing my phone and he sent me a text. He said, God told me you are my spiritual father. I didn't even answer him. After like three days, he said, why are all men of God like this? I said, look at, look at, look at the person who is stalking. Three days, 72 hours. The same person who is making all that noise. Temper. Anger. I will kill you. We will die in this place. I will remove my Christianity. When I beat you, I will put... No, no, don't remove your Christianity. Leave it there. It's not a garment you take off and put back. Listen, don't come and be a nice Christian in church and then go outside box. There are even believers that fight. You, you know, ba? As in, I mean, I don't mean words, verbal fight, real fight. When they finish, you'll be boiling and they say, remember, Jesus died for you. And they, they, don't do that if I have a daughter I would never give a, 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 my daughter to an angry man I don't care what he has he's a dangerous man men have destroyed children in the womb of women because of anger Temple. this is your house your home we welcome you, Lord, we welcome you. This is your house, your home. We welcome you. God knows from the depth of my heart that I love everybody in Koinonia. I may not know everybody by name, but I love you. You see me greeting people after service. I don't want to know who you are. I don't want to know who your father is, who your mother is. I never treat people and say, you, your father is a senator. You, your mother is, your father is an iron bender. You stand here. You stand here. I don't want to know who is who. I love people genuinely from the depth of my heart. In fact, that's the meaning of my name, the way to love. Do you love people enough to receive the anointing to change them? When I counsel sometimes from morning till night, I am tired and I'm hungry. It's because of love. I think all that I'm, I've taken today is just a drink that I took at the airport. I couldn't even think of saying I'll try to get a meal to eat. Why? Why should I be eating when there are people who are sitting and waiting for the word of God to change them? Why should I say, ah, I, I want to be... No, 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 no. I love you too much. The Bible says a good shepherd lays down not matches on the sheep lays down emoji you want power you are fasted you have prayed i'm showing you the other sides of the equation love i love god's people whenever i shout and quarrel you here there are times that i'm hard on you in my teachings but you can look beyond my teachings and know that i'm communicating from a heart of love I will never open my mouth 
and speak resentful and hateful words against anybody that God has created. No. no. You know that song? I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. It is his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to. Never rejoice at the downfall of others. You will never be anointed that way. Don't celebrate when a man falls. Are we together now? You hear that armed robbers came and robbed the church. You laugh and say, I, I, I knew it. They don't have faith. No. The pain of the body should be your pain. The joy of the body should be your joy. I'm teaching you what we call a corporate life. You must learn to hide your individualism. And let the church rise and be exalted. And sometimes you may need to constrain your honor and allow the body. When people send a lot of miracles, text messages with many things that have happened, sometimes I send it to the workers. You will never hear me use words like my ministry or my church. If you hear me use that, it, it was a slip of tongue or something that just happened because it is never my church. I'm only a steward. It's never my ministry. Before I was born, God was still at work. If, I, if it tarries after, long after I'm gone, I will only be one of many that has brought my contribution. I will never look down on the body of Christ. I will never look down on any man that is made in the image of God. I have seen people who look like nothing and within one, two, three years, God raised them. Some of us were like that. If we were to follow based on the standards of men, some of us would probably not be able to enter some of the places we are entering right now. But God has the ability to see the motif of men's heart. That's why many of us who think we are qualified never receive anything. And there are others who approach God and we say, Lord, if there is any vessel you are looking for, find one in me. I never forget where he's brought me from. I never forget what he's doing in my life. I love him with my life and I love his word. And I love the body of Christ. Everyone say after me, I love the body of Christ. I love God's creation. Yes. Do this little thing, brothers and sisters, and you will see doors open. I know many of you will be expecting me to say something great and something charismatic. Never trivialize what I am teaching you right now. Not only will it give you character, it will sustain your open heavens. As a pastor, people never become loyal to you until they discern that you love them. Many pastors hate their members. They only use their members. They use their members. There was a time I rebuked the protocol department. I said, why did you withdraw security? They said, ah, there is peace and calm. I told them, I said, peace or no peace, make sure that we have adequate securities at all times, not just during koinonia, but any activity let there be correspondences with security because I love God's people too much, God brought these people as a trust, we must be able to take care of them, you don't want to imagine how much we spend every week transporting buses, the chairs and the rest, and the protocol department know they will never meet me once and say, are we not spending too much it is never too much for the people that God is going to raise to become mighty people. It is never too much. Love. Love. There remain these three. Faith, hope, and love. But the Bible says the greatest is love. Let me show you one scripture as we round up. One scripture that has blessed me so, so much. 1 John 4 verse 16. Please media, give us 1 John 4 verse 16. These words came very strong upon my heart and I pray that it will be strong upon your heart the same way it came upon my heart. Go ahead and read. Let's read together. One to read. And we have known and believed the love that God had to us. Listen. He said God is what? He didn't say God has love. He didn't say God loves. He said, God is love. 
And then, this is what he says. He says, he that dwelleth in love, dwelleth in God and God in him. Not he that prays in tongues. He that dwells in love. Your life becomes like a magnet when the love of Christ is at work in you. Listen, there are people on this earth, when you stand close to them, you literally feel the love of Jesus like a river flowing. You know there is nothing you do that will drive them away from you. They love you. May God make you such a person in the name of Jesus Christ. This is one big secret of the anointing of the Spirit upon my life. Every time I come for koinonia and I sit down here, I watch the protocol department doing their thing, the ushers doing their thing, and the love of God falls upon my heart for them. As I stand and see the way they are struggling to make sure things work, I never come here morning or afternoon to supervise what they are doing. Sometimes as early as 8 o'clock in the morning, they are already working, doing everything. And I look at them, every worker in koinonia, they know that I love them with my life. Not just because we, we put dinners for them. I love them with me. I will give my life for the workers. I will. And I mean it with, 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 with no words. I will never watch somebody come around me who is hungry. If you know me very well and you are close to me, after greeting you, I ask you, what have you eaten? And you try to say, no, no. I say, what have you eaten? If it is 500 naira that I have, we will share it. Listen, brothers and sisters, when the heart of love is at work in you, power will never be far from you. Never. Never be far from you. God will be able to bring members. God will be able to bring children. God will bring people that you will build. He that dwells in love is very important. It's not enough to pursue anointing. It's not enough to pursue lifting and fame. You must love people. Love overrides prayer. Love overrides fasting. First Corinthians 13. I just feel we should round up there. First Corinthians 13 as we round up. We are going to examine ourselves and our love lives. As far as God is concerned. God is doing a circumcision in our hearts tonight. For though I speak with the tongues of men, look up everyone, and the tongues of angels, there is no man alive who has entered this spiritual dimension where you can flow in the tongues of men and the tongues of angels. And the Bible says, even if you get to that realm, it says, and have not love. Can we have a version that says love if there is? It says, I am become as what? A sounding brass or a tinkling symbol in other words if i become such a man of god that i can speak both in the tongues of men right i am nothing verse 2 let's hurry up media please help us verse 2 and if i have prophetic powers is that not what we are looking for we are looking for it passionately chasing every man of god with handkerchief and and oil somebody met me in a meeting and just he just opened it and said man of god breathe on this oil a minute i just said god bless it it is done he just closed it i said you see the kind of thing we are talking about if i have prophetic powers the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose he says and i understand all secret truths come on now this is the realm of rema insights that we are looking for the bible says even if you rise to that point and you possess the mysteries and possess all knowledge then it says if i have sufficient faith no one on earth i know has gotten to that dimension so that you can remove mountains but have not love the bible says i am what on earth if I raise 10 wheelchairs, my name will be on poster everywhere. What will they call me? Great man of God. Tomorrow we are going for a crusade, right? And there will be all kinds of miracles in that crusade. I'm sure the people are excited right now. As I was passing, coming, I saw one small poster and I saw my face there. I just nodded my head. And we, and, I mean, we just passed. I, I saw the poster, you know, it's in Barnawa. The crusade is in Barnawa tomorrow. Barnawa for Christ's crusade. 
And while we were coming, I saw somewhere they just put my face. I said, somebody will see this now and say, ah, this man of God. While they are laughing and clapping, this is what God is saying. He says, if I have all this power to raise wheelchairs and prophesy and teach mysteries and I have not love, based on men's standard, I'm a great person. They will give me money. They will sow into my life. They will deceive all these deceitful things that happen. But the Bible says, I am nothing empty zero useless verse 3 even if i doll out all that i have i dish out the giving dimension now even if i give out everything i have to the poor in providing food and if i surrender my body to be burned or in order that i may glory but i have not love he says i gain what do you know what it means to give yourself to die? How many people have we rejoiced and said they died for others? When we get to heaven, you will see that their reward may be small for some of them. Love is a big deal to God. Love endures long. Now give us King James. We're ready to be kings. Give us King James. Charity does what? Suffers long. The word long suffering, there's the word patient. Now, everywhere as I read on, wherever the word charity is, except your name is charity, I want you to put your name there. Ready? We'll just read it. One, two, read. Joshua Selman suffers long and is kind. Joshua Selman envies not. Read it. You are reading it. Joshua Selman vaunted not itself and is not puffed up. Stop. Is that true about you? Is that true that you are patient? Are you a patient person? Is that true about you that you are kind? Is it true? Of, I know you pray in tongues. I know you are a miracle worker. You are an apostle. You are a prophet. Is it true that you do not envy? Oh, how many believers die in envy? It's not puffed up. You don't lift up yourself. Trying to show that you are better than others because of whatever privileges you have. Next verse. We're rounding up. It says, It does not behave itself unseemingly, and then love seeketh not her own. The meaning of that is that you prioritize people and their needs even above yourself. In other words, you are not selfish and self centered. Is that true? Is that really true about us? Aha, here is the point. It's not easily angered or provoked. Think it no evil. When was the last time you saw people and you did not think negative about them? To look at a lady and say, this lady looks like a prostitute. What of this lady looks like the kind of vessel God will use? Says, does not think evil. Verse 6. Rejoice not in iniquity. So you see, living in iniquity is also a sign that the love of God is not in you. Because when you love him, you will love to please him. When you love your fellow man, you will not come and destroy your fellow man and do all these kinds of things. But rejoice it in the truth. Seven, it peered all things, endurance. There are times that for the sake of the love you have for people, you will endure a lot of things. It believed all things. It hoped all things. It endured all things. Eight. It says love never fails. Everyone say it after me. Love never fails. It says but whether there be prophecies. They shall what? That means even the prophetic realm. Has errors and limitations. It says whether there be tongues utterances communications the bible says they shall cease whether there be knowledge rema revelation it says they shall vanish away verse 9 for we know in part and we prophesy in part 10 we're reading down to 13 or 14 but when that which is perfect is come that which is in part shall be done away with 11 when i was a child void of love i proved it by speaking like a child I understood like a child 
and I taught like a child. Tonight's teaching is making us become mature people. It says, now that I am a man, I am matured, I put away what? Childish things. That means something about your speaking must change after tonight's meeting. Something about your understanding must change after tonight's meeting. Something about your thought life must change your action. It says, for now we see through a glass. Go to verse 13, please. 13. And now abided what? Hope. Faith. Hope. And love. These three. It says, but the greatest is love. What is the greatest? The greatest, brothers and sisters, is not building a ministry. The greatest is not becoming a man of God. The greatest is not becoming a custodian of kingdom mysteries and revelation. The greatest is not just having power and anointing. No. The universal set is love. At the end of my life, I want this to be said about me. That I love God with all my heart. I served him with all my heart. And that I loved humanity with my all and my heart. I don't want no credit to my name that I built houses and bought cars. And um, what happened? I traveled abroad. I own jets. I own all those things. Thank God for them. But I sincerely do not want all of these things added because they are all useless. I have learned early in life the vanity of anything that is outside love. When we get to heaven, they are not going to ask how many wheelchairs were raised. They are not going to ask how many suits you wore. They are not going to ask how many Versace you bought. They are not going to ask how many first class flights you entered. All that matters when you stand before him is love. And if the love of God is not found in you, this is scary, but let me tell you the truth. You are going to hell. You are going to hell without the love of God, for sure. So we are going to pray tonight. Very briefly, rise up on your feet. In one minute before we pray, please everyone rise if you can. If you can, please rise inside and outside. I just want you to close your eyes for one minute and reflect on what I've taught tonight. Love. The Bible says God is love and he that dwells in love dwells in God. I want you to reflect in one minute how much the love of God has dried away from your heart and how much your love for the body of Christ has been questionable. I want you to think of how your life has contributed to destroying the life of others if in any way it has. Or the way your life has contributed in destroying churches, ministries, men of God, the body of Christ. Think of how you have brought denominational barriers and destroyed people's faith. Think of how you have castigated pastors and made people not to listen to them. It's time for change. I know you're looking for power. I know you're looking for anointing. I know you're looking for money. You're looking for increase. We all are searching for these things. But I'm showing you the way. God is speaking to us. Some of us here, imagine how many relationships you have destroyed because of lack of love. Imagine people who would have been married now, but because you do not sustain the love of Christ, you destroyed best friends. Imagine destinies you have turned around and aborted. Some of you have even made marriages to be divorced. You have made pastors to hate other pastors. You have carried news that are not newsworthy. You have made ministries to fight themselves. If you want to see the glory of God upon your life, the law must be at work. Imagine how many times you have held unforgiveness in your heart against people. Your husband, your wife, your brother, your child, fellow believers. It's time to let go. Lift your voice in one minute and begin to pray and say, Lord, let it go. I release it tonight in the name of Jesus. All the unforgiveness, the bitterness, the hurt, I release it and let it go tonight. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Please, we are praying very seriously. Talk to the Lord. Say, Lord, never 
will I be an enemy of the advancement of your kingdom. Never will I be the reason why someone's destiny will be jeopardized. Never will I be the reason why the body of Christ will crumble. I repent of ignorance. I repent of childishness. The Bible calls love the bond of perfectness. That's why I call it the mystery of perfection. This is the ancient mystery that makes men perfect. Mature. Lift your voice and pray and open up your heart before God. Lord, I've fought people who do not agree my, with my Christian perspectives. I've fought men of God and ministries. I've fought people who are gifts from God to me. Who would have changed my life. But I've resented them because of their ideologies. I have hated people of other religions. I have hated people who sustain a different perspective to life than my own. Anybody who is not like me becomes my enemy. I repent tonight in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Walk upon my heart. Walk upon my heart. Change my heart. Change my heart. No more hatred. Lift your voice and rebuke the spirit of hatred. It's a spirit. Hatred is a choice. You can choose to love and you can choose to hate if there are people you hate and you hold on in your heart i like you to begin to release them right now i release my mother i release my father i release that pastor i release my church i release this denomination i release my wife and my husband hatred is a choice love is a choice hallelujah two more prayer points very quickly we are going to pray against anger and that hot tempered attitude please listen if you are here and you know you are suffering from anger you are not going to come out but i want you to be honest and pray and say lord i'm tired of this thing it's destroying my life it's destroying valuable relationships don't pretend and say i'm a this and that open your mouth and pray temper Sisters, make sure you pray. Brothers, make sure you pray. The Bible says, Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. It says, Don't give the devil a foothold. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I choose to be joyful. I choose to be a happy person, regardless of circumstances. Are you praying tonight? I cause the spirit of anger from my life. I cause the spirit of anger from my life. I cause the spirit of resentment and cynicism and unforgiveness and bitterness and hatred. I cause the spirit of anger, that hot tempered attitude that hurts others, whether with words or actions or thoughts. Pray it out of your life. Pray it out of your life. I'm a changed person tonight. I make up my mind for change. I make up my mind for change. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I want my life to host the glory of God. I want to be a genuine career of His power and His glory. And I lay aside the weight and the encumbrances that rob me from carrying the glory of God. hallelujah last prayer point let's hold hands all over this building hold the hands of someone i'd like you to pray for yourself and pray for koinonia passionately from your heart lift up your voice and say lord like a mantle may your love come upon everyone and upon the house go ahead and pray lord a baptism of love in every department among the leaders among the executives pray for love pray for me pray for love let the love of god that bond of perfectness be at work in my brother and my sister now pray for the person whose hands you are holding pray you don't need to know them 
you don't need to know their tribe you don't need to know where they are coming from there's one thing that binds us all together that we love the lord some of them may be struggling in sin but pray for them you love them some of them may be wounded soldiers they may have made mistakes they may have messed up in different areas but you must pray for love pray for your family members many of them may not deserve your love but i like you to pray and say lord the love of god in my heart the love of god across my neighbor hallelujah hallelujah please hold hands we're praying i won't harm you with words from my mouth i love you i need you to it is his will that every need be supplied Never make your life of today. Never make your life an accommodation. Never make your life an accommodation for hatred and bitterness. Anybody that comes into your life and is trying to sow the seed of bitterness, drive them far from your life. Don't anybody that comes and is gossiping about, drive them far. I never allow these kinds of environments. Because when the love of God is perfect, then you'll find out that sickness will leave you. For as long as those things are there, sickness can hold on to you. Failure can hold on to you. Jesus said, Satan cometh to me and does not find anything. Many of us, we keep getting sick and sick. We keep getting oppressed. Because when Satan looks at you, there's something in your life that looks like him. But when love is perfected in you, believe me, believe me you conquer death when love is perfected you conquer sickness when love is perfected you conquer failure when love is perfected you conquer limitation when love is perfected your health is preserved there's no stress there's no there's no blood disease as a result of any stress you live a very happy life by choice a happy life by choice hallelujah before i pray for us very quickly still holding hands there are people here tonight you've heard me teach on love and there are many of us the Lord is talking to you and first and foremost you've not even established your love for Jesus Christ you may be a Christian you may be inside outside maybe you once fell in love with God but for some reason you have derailed you know you have derailed and there are people who have never made that decision every time you hear preachers making an altar call like this you scorn them you think they are wasting their time the Lord Jesus is giving you a chance tonight. Wherever you are, please, I'd like you to leave that hand of your neighbor and make your way to the front. We have just one or two minutes for this. Wherever you are, make your way to the front right now. God bless you. People are coming. Celebrate them. Outside, inside, God bless you. It's time to receive the greatest love. God bless you. And there are people who have done a lot of things in their lives. And they are asking, can God take me back? I want you to know that God will take you the way you are and change you. Make your way to the front. We don't care what you have done or not done. Jesus said, he who has no sin should first cast the stone. Make your way to the front. Two minutes, please. God bless you. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. Let this be a new beginning. Win that war in your heart tonight. Win that war over destiny tonight. God bless you. Make way for them. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming out. We love you. Everybody at one time or the other has had to make this decision. God bless you, my dear. Join them. Bless you, my brother. If you're still thinking about it, just rush out quickly. I want to lead you to this prayer. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed. It's a decision that will change your life. Lift your right hand. 
and I want you to say this after me from the depth of your heart. You're not reciting a poem. Let this be. I want you to know that Jesus is in this place. Say, Lord Jesus, I've heard your word tonight and I declare that I love you with all my heart. I ask you to forgive me. I've lived my life the way I want. Now I hand over that life to you. Take that life and use it for your glory. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that from today, I'm a changed person. My past is gone. My past is over. A fresh start begins for me today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now keep those hands lifted as I pray for you. Father, you brought these ones to change them and bless them and we thank you. Some of them have gone through things we cannot imagine. I pray that tonight will be a fresh start for them. Some of them are giving their lives to Jesus for the first time. Others are rededicating their lives. May they never go back to their lifestyles again. Give them a new lifestyle in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you that God will make you mighty men and women. I pray that you will be completely changed from today. Forward ever and backward never. I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please follow the gentleman waving his hands. There's a gentleman and a lady waving their hands. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.